Right, let's see what we've got in this bag. Get the blade out, would be helpful. Ah, right. So you've probably seen lots of these are used by other people, various videos, I've seen these appear lots of times. So you've got little thermocouples and you basically stick a thermocouple on here. You can then test the soldering iron to see what temperature it's actually sitting at. Try this out, eh? Let's get one out. Colour coded so you know which way around to put it. It's got a few spare ones there too, which is nice. I don't expect to use it that much, so it probably won't need them. So you've got red and blue to stick on. Like that. Oh, there is a battery in that. Wow, that's surprising. Okay, cool. I don't know, is it about 15, 20 bucks, something like that? That seems about right. Try out the soldering iron and we'll see what temperature it ends up at. Zoom. So that's sitting at 300 I set to. 300 degrees, let's see what comes up. Okay, 295. That seems like it's about it. 295. Let's ignore the cat which has decided to come in right now. There you go. That's more like it. 340, I thought it was a long way out. Yeah, I knew it was hotter. That's what I suspected. I thought it was out by about 50 degrees. Just in the way it's soldering. It seemed to be too hot. 350, it just seemed like it was burning the flux too much. So uh, sure enough, I was right. That's already been helpful. Plus I could show you the manual too, shouldn't I? FG100, what it's called. There's some specs down here. Celsius, one degree Celsius steps. Well, that's clearly obvious in using it anyway. It's a K type thermocouple. That's nice and common. Measurement tolerance plus or minus three, three degrees C between 300 and 600 degrees C and outside of those ranges is plus or minus 5 degrees at 300 degrees C it should be within 3 degrees that specs is in there it tells you how to use it 9 volt battery we know that already dimensions yeah okay not exciting and some operation instructions just there in case he wants to see any of this here we go make it nice and big and hopefully you can see and allow you to read the manual if you so desire. Heavy. Done. Let's see what's in this one. I'm guessing by the fact the bag is one of these toll courier things, you can already guess that it's going to be an LM14. Alright, what do we have? 35 volt, 1000 UF. Did I get some of those already? Mm. Okay. And. 16 volt, 15,000 UF. These are parts for the Valhalla 2703. Those are some of the parts I was waiting for. Did we get a sense of deja vu? No? Good. Still not deja vu? Okay. Ah, oh, what have we got here? Boucher? Yep. 470 UF, 16 volt. Power on it. Yep, yeah, sure enough. Again for the Verhala 2703 when I did a repair on that. I'm getting all the parts together. Once I finish getting all the parts, then I will do a video on it. And hopefully we'll get it fixed. But this is just capacitors, just to do some like maintenance type work first, replace all the caps, and then we'll see how we go with that. Deja vu? Really? Do I have deja vu about deja vu? This is what's in this one. One thousand UF twenty-five volt. So we get a lot of those for some reason. Didn't think I ordered that many of them. Hmm, I'll have to look into that. Okay. What's in this one? Well, it's a auction win. I know that much. Oh well, okay. I seem to have a rather large assortment. So got some Minecraft switches in here. Leave our micro switches, they all look like they're old stock but unused. New old stock. Yeah, it's a nice snippy one, that's nice. And what else have we got in here? Push switch. Matching switch. So this is another switch assortment which I've won online. Main switches, yeah. This will go with my collection of other switches. A whole bunch more, load of switches. Anything else in here? It's all the same, is it? Switch 38s. Oh, I think I've got a few Switch 38s now. Let's get a switch out and actually have a look at it. This came about because I had some test gear which had bad main switches on. I actually had a couple of bits of test gear. And they bad, had bad switches. So, trying to find suitable switches was a bit of a pain. 80 amps? No, nah, it can't be right, surely. <laughs> 
5 slash 80 amps 250 volt nah that can't be 80 amps there's no bloody way what planet they on I must be reading that wrong if you can interpret this writing on here let's get it in light so you can see it alright um yeah it's got a 5 slash 80A 250 volt AC I read it as 5 amps AC I can understand 5 amps but not 80 5 eighths of a zero? Oh, no, I can't be right, can I? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Right, got to check the back in the bag. It's not that interesting. So if anyone needs any switches that look like this, let me know, because I think I can spare one or two. Um, they are all the same. I'm not short of switches. I'm sure they'll come in handy. I can't know how much it was now, it's fairly cheap. That's why I got it, obviously. I think it was only like 20 or 30 dollars or something like that. I figured, hey, you can't go too wrong with it. This is my switch is probably worth that alone, really. So, right. Done. Another online auction score. I actually won a few of these now. Um, I wasn't expecting a win. So I've, I've bid on these things before and lost by a lot. So I wasn't expecting a win. So I've bid on three of them. And I put all those bids on. And uh, I won them all. <laughs> so I've got two more coming. Now these are the ball mounts. Plastic, what is that, nylon? I think it's a nylon. Um, oh, these aren't metal either. I thought these would be metal. They look like metal. Oh, it's all plastic. Made in Italy. They look like they're metal. And that's really good metal effect on there, I have to say. It's been sprayed. Um, there's a base plate there. So I've got three of these things in total. Mounting kit. Some screws. Those are the screws for the mount, I'm guessing. Which will screw into the brackets. Um, that's plastic as well. Hmm. I thought it was a plastic, wouldn't bit so much. So it's just a monitor mount. So I can try and reorganise my bench here and what have you in an attempt to get more space yeah. uh, let's just go together at least that bit's metal so the bit that goes in the back of the monitor is metal yeah wall mount, at least that's metal that needs to attach to that. That will go through there like that, won't it? That'll go on there. And that'll go on there for the bolt. Who needs instructions? You don't need instructions. You admit. Yeah, no, no, I'm gonna. Yeah. Men don't need instructions. We're quite capable of fucking up without instructions. Did I say that earlier? Um, no. We don't need to be told how to get it wrong. We can do it wrong perfectly fine. Yeah. Could go the other way around actually. Could go either way. Hmm. I think it would go the other way around actually. I think it would go through that way. Square into the plastic. Then the bolt. Then. No, I can't go in there, surely. Well, there's that bolt too. Got a bit of one to go through there. Right, so I think it's just no washer. Hmm, okay, not sure I like that, but anyway. Yeah, so you can tip up and down. Get up that spanner which I've got on the other side of the room, which I can't bother going to get. It's cheap. There we go. I'll do the proper tool, it's about mm, eight feet away. But why use the proper tool when you can bodge it? Oh, okay, that hurts. <laughs> uh, come on, go. I did nine o'clock on that. Nine o'clock. Okay, so nylock nut. 
All right, okay, so that'll be on there like that, and then that'll be on like on there like that. Like that, and then we've got this cover which will clip over the top of it afterwards. Okay, so we will shove this through here. It's got a square one side, sort of turning, so that's okay. We'll shove it in like that. We've got a washer which will probably go in there, maybe, I'm guessing. What do you reckon? Do you think that's right? And no metal washers, which is disappointing. I should I'd expect this is metal washer really. So it go on there. So it gives it a little bit of resistance to turning. This will have the same thing. It means it can't pivot at all. So if you need to spin it around, you can't do that. Hmm. But if we took those off, maybe you could do it. No, I don't know. Yeah, pivoting's not an option, but that's okay. Um, so then we've got this piece here and these bits here. And so these obviously caps to go over that to tidy it up so it makes it look nice. That would go on there. Why is that shape? Oh no, it'll be that for cables. You run the cables through. That's why it's like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's stop it like that and, and we'll clip this on like this. And it'll be just awesome, won't it? It'll be like that, and then this one here will go in there, kind of uh, like this. And like that. We'll put those together. And it, it, it's all good. It, it won't break it, whatever. It's, it's really? You expect to use wall plugs? I suppose that'd be for um, masonry, not uh, plasterboard. Mm. <laughs> To go on the plus of wall, it'll fall off pretty quick, I'm pretty sure. Uh, what screws have we got in here? We've got um, some different size screws. These are be well, bolts, these are be for the um, monitor and mouse itself. But it seems like they're not all there, maybe. I don't know. So we've got four of that size. Oh, no, we do have four, it's okay. We've got four of each. So that's all right. Four of each size. That's fine. That's all there. Cool, so I can mount a monitor on the wall now if I want to. Which I do, which is why I bought them. But yeah, you don't need instructions. It's fine. Right, well right here is a big box. It weighs, I don't know, close to 20 kilos. What does it say there? 22 kilos, 22.68 kilos. Right, um, new piece of test gear new to me so let's get opened up and show you what's in it. Unfortunately the camera's really close. So we'll see how we go with this. I'm going to rearrange this camera. This isn't working. Well I'm going to try recording this and we'll see how we go. I don't know if it's going to work or how well it's going to come out because the lighting's not the best just here. Right but here we go. All the foam stuff. What worries me about this expanding foam is that if there's an opening in the bag or something, it can actually get into the instrument, and that really worries me. <laughs> One day it's going to happen. Yeah. There were some dents on the outside of the box, and even a puncture hole, so I'm hoping nothing's damaged. I need much more space for this stuff. What do we have? <coughs> a very heavy piece of gear. Hopefully you can see it's okay. Hopefully. Try and get the lighting better. So basically, it's a 81, uh, sorry, 8901B modulation analyzer. Now I did a, um, a thing showing the uh, manual which I had arrived for it. So apparently it has a fault. Apparently, um, these buttons are a little bit sticky. Apparently, the display flickers. You know, it uses a multiplex display. I've had a little look at the manual and just briefly tried to understand how it works. And it's using multiplexing, as you kind of understand. So, buttons aren't too bad. 
a little bit sticky, a couple of them, but down there is slightly sticky. But, yeah, I can live with it. So, I hate when I stick stickers over there, but that'll all come off that residue. No rattles out of it at least. There are no feet, but that's okay because I've got a whole bunch of new ones recently, haven't I? And this end of it, that's the back end. What have we got here? AM, FM, recorder, IF outputs, time base input, no output, uh, modulation output, audio input, center, IF power, AM, FM, uh, for calibration outputs, local oscillator, nothing there, remote control, I'm going to be using that anyway, frequency offset stuff, GPIB of course, and there's a in connector there for the input, 50 ohm, 1 watt max. 20 volt DC max, so it's a give it a DC shielding, I suppose. But uh, 50 ohm, 1 watt. So that's you stick the RF into there. And uh, next thing I need to do is look at adjusting the voltage setting on there. Okay, so I've got it standing on its face on the bench. I'll hit, when I put it down, I'll hear the buttons click. <laughs> it's pushing all the buttons in, but uh, it's in place. So I thought I'd just try and capture this on camera a bit better. Here we go. So here's the card. All right. So with the device the right way up, it's supposed to read the voltage you want in that orientation. So here's the voltage you can have, depending on which way around you put it in. So that's 220 that way around. So 100 volts that way around. Flip it over. 230, 240 volt. Okay. So that's the one. Wants 230 and 240 volt. So I'll put it back in that way, that should be the correct voltage setting. Push it back in. It's always very important to do that when you get a piece of gear. Fuse should also be replaced. Current fuse is 2.5 amp, 250 volt. 2.5 amp. Hmm. What does it say what should be in here? It doesn't appear to be marked on the back here anywhere. It'll be in the manual. I'm off the end, I've got the manual. In theory I should, have, I should halve that value to go to double the voltage, so I'm going to go and do that. Even 200 amps seems a bit high though, so I might chuck a 1 amp in there and see how that goes. So I had a quick look at the manual, and the manual says it should be a 1.5 amp fuse for 240 volts. Now, I've only got a 2 amp or a 1 amp, so I don't have anything between the two. Although I might even have some in a box somewhere amongst a whole bunch of other stuff, but... I thought I'll chuck a 2 amp in for now. It's still slightly better than what was in there. So we'll go with that. Let's power the thing up and see what happens. You ready for the bang? Ready? Oh. Oh. That sounds like a shorter transformer, almost. Or something shorting out. That's why the display's flickering. Can you see the display? All the indicators are on. Yeah, she ain't happy. Looks like power supply faults, so at least we know what to do with that. So this project I'll put to one side. I'll put it with a queue of projects, and at some point in the future video, I will pull this thing apart, investigate what's going on there. But it does sound like a power supply problem. It sounds like the caps are gone. It's just no smoothing. It's like AC's coming straight through it or something like that. That's really what it sounds like which will be will play havoc with digital circuitry. It really doesn't like AC going through digital circuits. Okay, so if you want to see me work on this 8901B in the future, check out a future video. There will be videos on this. I'll obviously do you know, at least a couple of videos, I expect. Make sure you subscribe and check back later on for these videos. Watch out for them. It probably won't be too far away. We'll see how we go. Yeah, that ain't happy. So all these lights are on. The lights here are all on. Yeah, so it's, it's like trying to start, but not. That's fine. I'm pretty sure it's just power supply.